I'm Peter Bailey, author, um, host and creator of Nightcap with Peter Bailey. A writer, a journalist, a person who is geared to capturing our true voices through film, through storytelling. When I was growing up in the Virgin Islands, I used to, I had this, I've always been a dreamer, I've always been a thinker, and my parents were very critical in making me realize that the reality that I believe in is much more powerful than the reality that's around me. You know in the Virgin Islands we have a lot of these uncharted be beaches where like, you gotta be in the know to know them. So I would go down to this particular one, it's on the way to Secret Harbor on Ridge Road, and it's, it's nestled and it's hidden, it's down this mountainside. And I would sit out there, and what was so cool about this space was that because you didn't have a lot of wild, you didn't have a lot of human traffic, it was like nature in full, in, in its raw, naked form. So you would have whales, you would have, I would see all these animals and sea life, and I would sit down on the rocks, and I'll look out and I'll pretend to see New York, pretend to see LA. I'll try to see the places I wanted to be so I could realize my dreams. Growing up in the Virgin Islands, for me, that's what it was like. A kid with talents and dreams and hopes and beliefs, but never thinking he'll get the, 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 he'll be given the road to get there. Successful people go to college to explore their passion and figure it out. So I did, I took a gamble and I, I went into it, I went in and followed my passion. And um, who really, a guy that's a friend of mine to this day, Melvin Claxton, that won the Pulitzer. You know, I remember, I didn't really know anything about journalism, but I knew all oh, there's a guy that won the Pulitzer, he's from where I'm from. So I kind of, it was like kind of cool. He doesn't know this, but, I would use his name a lot in different cover letters or what that, you know. But you know, he's like a great friend of me to this day, and and um, went to the library, brother, and just read up what I can about writing in general. I didn't know anything about it. When I started out, I would figure out people's emails address. I would read a magazine's massive, and I'd go down the list, and I'd experiment with emails. If your name is John Thomas, I'll try to say John dot Thomas at Time Magazine, John slash Thomas, Thomas dot John, and I would do this for hours and hours and hours and hours to every magazine, every publication in America. I'll write them letters and I'll try to figure out their home address. And lo and behold, I landed my first internship in news. They threw out this crazy process. It was Wayne back that gave me my first break in, in in real hardcore journalism at the Village Voice and. I remember he calls me up, and Wayne is famous for the Rudy Giuliani books and whatnot. And he calls me up. He says, man, look, man, I don't have any more spaces for a fellowship, but ah, something about you. He says, so can you come up? Brother, this was a dead of winter. I didn't have anywhere to stay in New York City. I lied and told him, man, yeah, I'm good. I got a house, I got everything. After those experiences, man, I got my big, my first big break at Newsweek, Newsweek Magazine. Marcus Mabry gave me a break at his magazine. And after that, I went to Time Magazine. And, and the rest, I guess, as they say, is history, per se. Trick Daddy called me, famous, rap star, Trick Daddy, you know, he called, he was like, you know, I'm a fan of your work. I'm like, you're a fan of my work? He was like, yeah, man, I like the way you write about people's, man. You write about what we're trying to become, where we're getting to. You try to you try to shed us in a positive light and you get to who we are as a very real person. So I just stepped out on faith, man, and penned his autobiography. You know, that, that book came out with Simon & Schuster, MTV, became a cult classic, and then after that, I wanted to take my written work the way I, lo I love to portray our people in the most, you know, idealistic light. I wanted to do that with a show. I wanted to create these very authentic, uplifting, soulful conversations. And that's how Nightcap was birthed. Nightcap is the purest, most authentic, realest, 
inspiring, introspective conversation in pop culture. It is the conversation piece with people who are in the news. You know, I'm basically creating a space where 50 Cent is conversing with you. And in that space for me, we're getting to the core of what he believes in, what he stands for. Because if we're gonna empower anyone with our money, you have a right to understand who, what, what do they believe in. We're showing us is not caricatures, we're showing us as a people with core values, with, who believe in faith, love, God, and spirituality. And, and that's what I, I, I'm, I'm happy when I have artists who call me and say, you know, Peter, I want my fans to see the, to see the diamond in me. I want my fans to understand me in a way that, that only you can, you can bring out of me. And what's so funny, I had TV executives say this will never be successful. There will never be a show, a series, that's having very high-ended intellectual conversations with urban entertainers that people want. Because the concept is we want ratchetness, we want negativity, but that's not what we want. That's what they give us. That's what they give us. You know, inspiration is the, is the most marketable commodity there is on earth. I spent many years in journalism at Time, Newsweek, all these institutions. And while I loved the opportunity at those institutions, those institutions were created for, wasn't for us. In Dr. King's final years, what he preached was economic empowerment. You know, we have to own our own lot. It's as basic as real estate. My media franchise is my real estate. Now I've built it. It's, it, it started off as a vacant lot with litter and trash, and now it's blooming, and now those buyers are coming to me. So now when, the, when these networks come, when they come to me, I call the shots. That's the only way for us, man. That's the, because I don't want another Virgin Islander going through, if I could stop another, if there's a young brother, a young Virgin Islander, sister, brother coming up that wants to get into media, movies, books, if I could create a lane and make it more easier for them, that's the vision. The vision is to make it easier for the next generation so we all rise. Started out with NBC, now we're syndicated in CW, and now we're moving towards larger national syndication. And throughout that odyssey, one of my acting friends said, Peter, it's time for you to explore that other passion of acting and theater you had. We're going back to your Dorican, Miss Fleming, her drama class. And man, you know, I went for this audition for this very powerful movie on the Civil War, where it's a period piece of slaves who freed themselves and they go to this utopia where it's, you know, it's a story of, 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 of the Amish and, and, how, and how we as a race, we as a people got together to help each other become the best we can. I'm an example of you can will whatever you believe in. Because I remember way back when I started, man, I had editors that would not give me a shot because of my accent. My Virgin Islands accent was very thick. I had one guy at a newspaper said, look, man, we don't, we don't run headlines, I read headlines, okay? So, it's so funny, now my accent is considered exotic and marketable with the new advent of Idris Elba, the brother from 12 Years a Slave, we're now the international black male, we become marketable. So it's now so ironic that now the same thing that was considered a handicap for me is a commodity. Being a VI ambassador, being someone who Where's the Virgin Islands in my heart? Um, even this, even this feature, even talking to you, even talking to my people, I get interviews of different. You know, I, this is more special to me because it's home. Look at the large voice we have. Look at the Tim Duncan's, arguably be the greatest athlete the NBA has ever seen. I would go to far as to say that. Um, the Brothers Rock City, the songwriters, you know, um, and these guys outside of the entertainment sphere. Look at the influence we're having on pop culture, on, on media. From this tiny little place, I tell people all the time, the Virgin Islands is, in my, I've traveled, I've seen a lot, it's one of the most beautiful. Man, when that moonlight hits, and you're driving down like the east end of the island and the water is just glowing, you know that God stopped to craft these islands. It's a blessing to rep the Virgin Islands, man. It's a blessing.